she has been fired, or at least Mythic Talent has scrubbed their sight of her. Toki Bird is getting more conventions in the future, and the Super Chat numbers are out for all of Niji Sanji right now. We're going to take a look at all of those, Niji Sanji EN and others, and more stories on this VTuber news. Moving on to Nalithia VT, who is a person that is a part or was a part of Mythic Talent. I'm not sure if the contract was canceled or if they just removed her because of, you know, current situation, removed her from this, the actual uh, page that they have for their talents because she used to appear on here. And now she doesn't. As you can see, you have a lot of other talents, a lot of talents. And I do mean a lot of talents, but you don't see Nalithia there. She used to be part of their main talent branch here, the VTuber creators. Now she's not. If you're wondering why, why did this happen? This. There were, um, you know, basically it was Laura, 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 Larita RPG. Larita RPG mentioned that um, Nalithia had been doing chargebacks, had been doing a lot of bad things. Nalithia here, a VTuber her uh she's been doing a lot of chargebacks she's been doing a lot of things uh and what we found out recently is that the emotes that she's doing chargeback for were two years ago there were emotes that she used either a year or two ago and she's now doing chargebacks for them she says that uh they're they were unusable but she used them for about a year uh that they were not at all uh worth it or anything like that um that she was scammed out of money and right here she even gives the emotes away to her community which shows that they are usable because she says you can use them however you want, which means that they're usable. If you're giving them away, it doesn't mean that they're not usable. They may be not usable right now because you're charging back and the commercial rights have been taken away. Once you do a chargeback, the commercial rights usually get taken away. So at this point, they may not be usable anymore, but that's because you did it. Like as we see here, it says, due to emote artist or RPG successfully scamming me. No, it's not a scam. She did all the work. You were happy with it for over a year. And now you're trying to get uh, mon your money back. And over $900, here are the files of all the emotes she made for me for free for you guys. And she did this on her Discord server, by the way. Please feel free to do whatever you want with the emotes. You have my full permission to use them for edits. But again, you've lost commercial permission. You've lost permissions because you are trying to get your money back. So you've lost all permissions to even have them be used. Post them whenever you want, or also can use them on your own Twitch, Discord, etc. channels. And she has them down there. Well, everything caught up to her. And it looks like Nalithia has been removed by Mythic Talent. It looks like they have been fired by Mythic Talent, at least from what we can tell. There is no specific announcement because Mythic Talent is just a talent agency. They do these things quietly. And it could be that either, either there is a contract negotiation going on or they've removed her because of just publicly removed her because of all of this stuff that's happening. Or they've decided to, you know, no longer have the contract going and on their end decided to get rid of it. It could be any one of those things that's happened. It says, well, she encouraged violent action against the artist. She stole $900 for her. Yeah, someone was saying that they were going to hurt the person and she didn't do anything against it. Uh, denying then it released the emails to the public. She did everything wrong out of pure arrogance. And I highly doubt Mythic was on a reputation, especially when they're signing on more and more VTubers. Content type that requires artists who would 100% who would 100% refuse to work with Mythic members. They didn't stop Nalithia. Yes, they could lose an artist that they could work with. That would be very great for them if they kept Nalithia. Mythic isn't an actual official agency. It's basically like a talent agency where they, they help you get, um, you know, they help you get sponsorships and things like that when you're big enough. It is very uh, crazy. Oh boy, there's that, there's that, there's that saw in the background. Sorry, that's why I was quiet for a long time. In my opinion, it goes like this. You already know that the indie is short for independent as opposed to corpo. Biggest difference between the two are that indies are in control of the content and other assets, but that doesn't change the fact that the large channels still likely need help running smoothly for that an indie would hire a manager someone to help them market themselves get sponsors contract artists etc that's what they're doing good she was unashamed in her scumminess i've heard from german speaking vtubers that she also got a lot of trouble from the de side as well interesting expand on that um you know basically she got uh people didn't like it people didn't like the fact the fact that that those things were going on uh oddly off the back i've noticed cinder isn't really listed there either it looks like there's probably some contract negotiations going on but so far it looks like she has at the very least nalithia is the most uh visible one right now that has been removed so today of course we're talking about doki bird and she's been having a lot of success recently a lot of positive things have been happening as you can see a lot of you know actual stuff she's part of the challenger circuit she is um you know gotten the peacemaker recently the wingman the wingman wingman she got the wingman Sorry, Peacemaker was the one I, I thought it was his wingman. She got the wingman from Height and I Buy Power. She's been having a lot of success lately. Invited to a lot of different collabs, invited to a lot of different um, uh, Apex tournaments. She's been having a good time. And now she's mentioning that she's going to be possibly going and doing other stuff. 
here and here's what we're gonna go for leak but i can't because contracts it's just oh i'm so excited so many things packed up the next couple of months let's just say i can say this i'll say this let's just say the doki bird world tour <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say there's a lot of conventions lined up. There's been like a lot of things regarding convention wise because I feel like I can say stuff like that because it's not just like, you know, it's not one convention. There's like multiple conventions that's like in the works. And that's like one of the things that I've always like, you know, really, really wanted to like meet you guys. I really want to meet my dragoons. I Yay, that's chance, awesome. But, I mean, I Yo. Have chances, but you know, there was like one instance where I, you know, it wasn't by choice. It wasn't my choice. Like, <laughs> Where, like, I was able to meet you guys last time. I'll just say, like, you know, the Doki Bird World Tour could be a reality. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I've always wanted was to be able to meet, like, dragoons around the world. And lately, I haven't been fortunate enough to sort of have, you know, a little sort of be able to do that. <laughs> I'm trying not to get in trouble right now, chat. So I'm trying to, like, limit what I can say and what I can't say. But, like, if you guys weren't following me on Twitter, I have a power and Hyatt sent me a PC. <laughs> I didn't realize this. I thought I was just unmarkable. <laughs> like, I literally thought, I literally thought I was just, you know, I say my mind too much or like, I'm just unmarketable. I'm not. Yeah, no, enough. no. Like, you I'm are marketable. I'm an anime girl that like, that fits the mold or like, I thought I was like, just unmarketable. But like, it's no, actually no, no. crazy. Very like, marketable. so many like sponsors and so many like uh, conventions that have like reached out to me and was like, we've always wanted to work with you. And like, <laughs> and I'm like, really? Me? I'm so surprised. Especially conventions. I was like, wait, what? Really? You wanted me to be there? <laughs> When you're doing appearance fees, um, you have to charge yourself for appearance fees. You know, you obviously can't do it for free because how the fuck am I going to survive? <laughs> yeah, it's very true. One of my friends who does like convention stuff, uh, she was like telling me, she was scolding me and was like, your appearance fees are too cheap. And so I was like, I don't know. She doesn't. Uh, well, I mean, she's pretty I starting. Like, I don't know what I'm doing because I've never done this before. I never fucking priced myself. I just wanted to go to conventions and like meet dragons. I don't know what my price is. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's normal, especially when you're an indie. You're like, well, uh, especially her. Niri Sanji was the one who set the prices back then. And, you know, they probably sent it exorbitantly like thousands of dollars. So even a thousand dollars would still be cheap for her appearance fee, because just having her there is going to bring in more than a thousand dollars. So that's what you have to do with the appearance fees. You have to make it close to what, like, you know, reasonable. Like, let's say they would get ten or twenty thousand dollars for what you have in there you could do it ten percent appearance fee which is ten percent of what they get for you you know that type of thing or what they expected to get for you which would be you know a thousand dollars in that case so yeah it would be a, it, probably a thousand dollars would be good so, you know i like to go over some of the the financials of these people i do like looking at the financials because it's interesting to take a look at the financials and here we go here's the financials for need to Ian members 2023 super chats because of the fact okay this is the revenues are on the left hand side these are the gross revenues that's before uh the niji cut and before the youtube cut the one on the right side are pretty much after the niji cut i believe 2023 super chats we get 686,000 for pomu and she ends up with about 153 because they take 30 percent and then they take 50 percent of that so she ends up with maybe like 20 30 percent as well so everything alira everybody the top ones pomu Elira 420, uh, 422, she makes 111. Nina 270 something, she makes 111. Over here, Vox, she makes um, over a million. I don't know of what, over a million dollars or over a million uh, um, yen, I don't know. But he ends up keeping about 468 at the end. 630 something for Mista, 232. Kyo, 111. Another one that's a high earner is Luca, but he only keeps 131. Ike only keeps 120. All the, this one right here in the middle is what they keep. And that is pretty freaking crazy when you think about like if it was just the 30 percent that they took vox would have taken home about a million dollars or yen or whatever it is a million and the others would have taken a lot more they would have only taken had a third taken away so this is very bad this looks very bad column one lifetime totals totals earned for 23 and 3 only column three adjusted total if they streamed for the full year while maintaining consistent super chap income um i could not find the actual numbers for Fernanda petra astra this means they did not reach the top 200 yes vox is still that much of a beast Elira is not. She's the sixth month Niji EN women behind Pomu, Selen, Nina, Scarla, and Aya. Incidentally, three of them are not with the company anymore, and another's health has, has uh, others concerned. Rounding out the top five are Vox, Hex, Scarla, Mr. Alban. I didn't include Yugo, who left before 2023, and Zion, who was only active for about a month. Scarla and Alban, despite not having the high CCV, still garners a lot of support from their loyal fans. I wonder what Niji Sandy advertised them as such. Uh, clear to the favorites aside from Vox. So yeah, that's the thing. Uh, it's still not a lot, considering that, you know, they should be making more uh, if their company had actually done the right thing and supported them correctly and give them everything that they need. But then again, we are talking about Nidhi Sanji, so these are the numbers you're going to see. Unfortunate, in my opinion. For all you peoples who are wondering, then data 
is going to be out there. The data is already out there. Said I heard of assertions about the number of streams in CCV. Being down, but wasn't sure either. I did some scraping from the VStats, Holodex, see if any coming coming up with any conclusions. TLDR summary. To me, it looks like the number of streams that have happened since the controversy are indeed down, but most of the four gens, Lazulite, Obsidia, Ethereum, Luxium, this pattern isn't happening as much with the latter gens. CCVs aren't really down a noticeable amount. I switched the viewer hours instead from VStats, and I see some small downturns like Uki and Ike, but still not all noticeable. What's really more noticeable in my graphs are the lack of streams. The lack of streams, the lack of streams. Look at this, all these numbers. These are all dot points in freaking the matrix. These are all the matrix type of stuff. You look at all these things, Melico Kyodan uh, by Hex Haywire. The, the, these are like up here, a lot of streams on December 3rd, you know, more more uh, views. The average viewers, they're more viewers, the higher it is, the more viewers they are. They're all ten trending towards low viewership. And especially in these last months, there's some that have, you know, hiatuses. Uh, but for the most part, they're low viewerships overall. By groups, here you, you see, most of their viewers are low here. There are some outliers, but most of them have low viewership. And the hours as well are kind of low. You have over here on Obsidia, you have some that have higher, some that have lower. Uh, but overall, the hours themselves are pretty low when it comes to what you want. And to show the top here, we're showing as well by all groups, the amount of streams are getting lower compared to how they were in the earlier of the year. And last year, like all these things, the numbers are low for all of them, including Obsidia, Luxium, Etheria. Numbers are low. When it comes to streams, the only ones that seem to be seem to be streaming a lot is Noctix, Iluna, XLA still pretty low, and uh, Crisis is going high. TTT is still going high because they're new. So all of that stuff kind of leads to, you know, numbers not being great. If you don't have a lot of streams, you won't have a lot of hours. If you don't have a lot of hours, then of course your 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 paycheck tends to be a little bit lower. So that's the, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. The numbers are going to be low. They're staying low. I just wanted you to see the, the little nerd side of it where someone actually did this on GitHub. Okay, what I was saying before is that uh, virtual YouTuber wiki's based on documentation has been biased according to what is being said here. Let's see here, February 5th, retirement. Many Color released a statement, statement last cup of coffee, music videos to lend YouTube channel. Nidhi Sanji put forth the statement. Basically, they're just putting stuff of Nidhi Sanji here, what Nidhi Sanji said. And then they released a joint statement on the situation. Yeah, they're not really, they're not saying anything in regards to a DokiBird statement, artist testimony, anything like that. They're just saying basically what the corporate side said. The scuff is real. The scuff is is cool and everything. It's, it's all good. Uh, the black stream, a paragraph ought to be deleted entirely. They aren't going to show both sides. They should just be stuck with the termination notice and content takedown. I don't know if the uh, the whole situation there is scuff of the virtual YouTuber wiki or someone is really a Niji Sanji shill and is trying to do that. But it, it's very scuffed that they're doing that. I think it's it's very just like it's it makes it look like not complete, which makes it look scuffed. In my opinion, I may be just very dumb with this, but that's, that's what I think. Um, one of the mods that needed system removed things related to Doki's statement, stating Wiki's rule of no relationship between them. Suggestion, first try to change the wording so it goes from confirmed to alleged and statement from Niji that they claim such a action is legal. If you made any edit to the Wiki, wait and observe, do not make big changes. We know that no relationship thing is BS because Zion's retirement page has statements from Sayu and Amano Serafi has statements from Alien Mixture. I'm going through it myself. Believe it's due to this on top of Niji Sanji's interpretation. Do not reveal any personal information about the VTubers. So they're trying to use rules, certain rules to go against it. This includes identities of those behind them, only when the VTubers themselves and their agencies have revealed the identities, which in Doki Bird they kind of pretty much have. Any other personal information is not allowed. They're trying to use that rules. What about when Selene's Twitch and YouTube mods revolted in open stream uh, on Selene's channel just to spam Doki Bird's one? I think the Mujin's video has screenshots of this happening. Yeah, those things are should should have made this thing al be allowed, you know? Uh, strange, the word claims and allegedly exists for a reason. After a quick skim of the profile VTubers, it seems to use conspicuously uh, missing from Selene's page. Rusha uses it. Amano Serafi uses it. Even Zion's section uses it. Um, Selene's section is also an outlier in that the only one that solely takes Corpo's side. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a needy, needy Sanji defender probably did it. It probably did that. Just also check the Doki Bird page out of curiosity. No mention whatsoever about the statements she did after the black stream video or harassment she faced for, as Selene. So that's also a bad thing. And this this whole thing, it's not right. I mean, you should actually put all the information out there, which is what I try to do. I always try to put all the information out there. So, you know, you can watch me or anyone else to get more information on this. All right, some people aren't very happy about this, but do not go and actually do anything about it because it is their choice. It is probably the agencies that made the choice. Octavio, or this person right here, is in April going to be going with uh, further on with uh, Octox with Octavio, with Niji Yen, Gustuk with Evalium, Avalum and EGEN. So on Sunday the 21st, he's going to be doing some EGEN stuff. And uh, 
do not go and harass them for doing EGN stuff. Uh, it could be any of these guys down here. Shoot, Yomino, Ike Evelyn, Sunny Briscoe, Alvin Knox, any one of these guys. Because it's going to be a guy's night out type of thing. It's going to be a guy's uh, type of stream. And it's not going to be involving too much craziness, hopefully. Hopefully, the Hollow Stars person, because this person is Hollow Stars, is part of Hollow Live. And you know, Hollow Live and Cover do have uh, a relationship with any color. So, in the sense of they're just trying to at least look positive and actually do some things with each other. And which is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be seen as a bad thing by some people, but I don't see it as a bad thing. Uh, you know, it's just basically cross pollinating, whatever you want to call it, with their viewers. Uh, so don't go and try to say anything or do anything bad. Just let them enjoy their time. If you don't want to watch him because he's with an Niji Sanji person, then don't watch that stream. Watch something else. A little bit of appreciation for Selen Tatsuki, who is now Doki Bird. Let's take a look what people think. I started doing digital art with seriousness due to Selen. It's my way of showing appreciation, so I'm going to be sharing some art I made for Selen in 2023. Starting with a biker pirate outfit I designed for her. All these things that they did. Look at this. This is what is supposed to happen when you're a VTuber. This is what is great when you're a VTuber. When you can inspire people to make art, to do something they love, or find something new that they love, this is when you know you've made it. This is when you know that you're making a positive influence in society, a positive influence in the culture, the VTuber culture. Um, definitely. That's where you get to see it. And of course, they did the biker thing uh, right here. They're doing, uh, you know, the uh, Dragoons, the old Dragoons. Uh, skateboarding and she's saying it's not natural and a pumpkin Selene. So all these things are things that they saw with Selene and they wanted to actually do, which is great. It's great to see this. I love that. She was how I got into Niji thanks to a variety of factors, including her collabs with Hollow. And by God, she was a bastion of joy and bounced off her collab partners easily. I mean, S, I think her first interaction with Zeta was her birthday call in and they bounced off each other so well. I mean, she's still a lot of those things. She's just a tomato instead of a dragon now. Exactly. She became, a, she, she let out her skin suit where she was Selene and now she's a tomato again. But yeah, go support Doki Bird. Go support good creators. Even if you're supporting Niji Sanji, enjoy, have a good time. Enjoy your Oshi, enjoy the stream. I'm not going to judge you based on that. Of course, when there is one good side, there's a bad side. There are extremes to every side. People are saying that they're, you know, threatening with bans and stuff like that on the Kurosanji subreddit. Uh, if you don't delete certain messages, they're getting messages from someone who claims they're a mod. Mods have specific mod mail messages that can be sent to you through Reddit. Uh, they will be marked as a mod. You can double check them as a mod in the in the subreddit itself. Uh, no mod will actually be sending you a message like that. They'll just delete it themselves because they have that power. They have the power to delete it in the actual subreddit. So there's no reason why you would be receiving a mod mail message that says, you know, oh, we're, you should be deleting this now or else you're going to be in trouble. Like they'll ban you. Like they can ban you for whatever reason. Uh, it can be abusive reason, but they can ban you for whatever reason. They're not going to just, you know, create this kind of stuff. The NDF is desperate to be telling us to delete posts now in the sub. It's probably a growing panic as the issues and Niji's loss of prestige becomes crystal clear to even most delusional. I mean, for goodness sakes, they have their own sub, so they clearly don't think they can influence the main sub enough. Also probably has something to do with the fact that reporting things that hurt their feelings will not result in automatic removal. So since reporting a post that hurts their feelings doesn't work, they want to actually get people scared and get them to remove it. The recent form of Luke Cub posts must have helped give solace to Luke Cubs confused and scared about the whole situation because everyone else was hostile. I wouldn't be surprised if many comments and posts here have made people's Delulu subside. So this is why we must be open to Niji refugees posting here because people can give valuable perspectives. Of course, valuable perspectives. Uh, Niji call center, scam call center. I have informed people the rules on brigading and their post violates that, but never demanded they delete their posts. Is that a problem? Uh, it's just referring to the rules you see concerning behavior and that's fine. We're more talking about delete your post or you will get banned from this community. Uh, when the person in question has no power to actually ban anyone from the community. Yeah, that's just that's just kind of like it becomes harassment at that point, really, honestly. Any reminders that the torrents are not allowed in the subreddit because it could actually get the subreddit canceled, removed, whatever you want to call it, for allowing pirating on there. Um, of course, you can look for torrents if you want to, because that's up to you. Personally, I wouldn't do that because I don't pirate stuff. So you could look for it, but I don't recommend it. Not incriminate the subreddit in the illegal questionable actions there have been mod comments against torrenting on posts related to ar live but no official posts that's why i'm making this post but it's not i'm not a mod do not share imply give torrents here also nidhi sanji doesn't want clips or screenshots which is dumb because hollow fest hollow fest the difference hollow fest allowed screenshots they didn't allow clips but they allowed screenshots of hollow fest nidhi sanji is not allowing it for their ar live which is dumb like they always allow hollow live always allows even for paid concerts for you to have screenshots 
you can always share screenshots because the thing that people go for is the singing. The thing that people go for is the actual concert, not the screenshot. So looking at the screenshot is basically just looking at a moment in time, but they allow it because guess what that's going to do? If they see, oh my God, look at this amazing outfit. They're going to want to buy the, uh, either the DVD or buy a ticket to see the VOD of it or whatever. And while it's still up. So that creates more hype. Now, Nidhi Sanji doesn't understand that. So they decided the AR Live does not allow screenshots or anything else related to that. So that's that's why they do that. But yeah, I'm watching out for such posts immediately. We don't want the safe haven to go kaput. Exactly, don't do that. Even if Nidhi Sanji is being dumb and they don't want clips or screenshots of it, um, just don't do that to damage the reputation of anybody. You can do it on your own time, but just don't put it on any of the subreddits because they can get canceled for illegal acts. I do. You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! You dare do this to me! The yacht has officially been sunk. Well, it hasn't even been sunk, but you know, it's one of those things. I do like showing these little, these little memes for you guys. This little funny, funny, funnies, little funny, funny in the hoods. And um, she did get the silencing contract. She didn't give the employment contract. And Sayu did some, give him a smack on the head by showing that because now they can't say that they don't have a silencing contract because someone who was officially one of their people did officially give that contract out. So that is, you know, pretty much all that the everyone out there needs to know. And I love, I love seeing these little memes. I love that people can create these memes. I love it. I just really do. So something that Niji Sanji doesn't have, at least, at least from what I've seen, that Hollow Live does have. Hollow Live, as long as they follow the rules, you know, the, the rules of streaming, all that kind of stuff, family is allowed, or at least family is not discouraged. Pekora has her mom. Narissa has all of her family, pretty much. Kiara, I think, had her mom on there once. Um, people on the JP side tend to do that too with family members and such. It's starting to become a little less problematic. If back in the day it was problematic with Toa getting in trouble for having a family member, that was a male on her stream because the unicorns got crazy on that. But Hololive has been um, lowering the restrictions on that as long as they keep the kayfabe and as long as they don't leak anything, family is allowed. I don't think we have had anyone in Niji, Ian, but who has family on stream, but I know that Hana Machia on ID, so no one on JP, but on ID, had her dad on stream. Utako from Niji JP and her sister on stream a couple times. Oh, so there have been. Okay, I've stand corrected. After a while, Niji Sanji had a change in intentional pol internal policy that stopped family members from appearing on stream, so they don't do that now. You can still talk about them, but they aren't allowed to appear on streams. The Reddit post that Utako video is about two years ago, so it seems like it's a newer thing that they don't allow it. Meanwhile, Nares has recruited her damn near entire family, and Pekora's mom set a record for her joke debut. What did they used to say about Niji being the less restrictive and more fun in company? 16 family members. Matsuri's mom and brother, Pekora's mom, Chloe's sister, uh, ha ha Hachama's sister, Suisei's sister, Ao's mom so far. For Ian, we have Kiara's mom, Kali's mom, Nares's two sisters, and her mom, Gura's mom, have apparently appeared shortly and lastly because I actually remembered Battle's brother too. For ID, we have Kobo's mom and Ollie's mom. So yeah, uh, Hollow Life seems to be way less restrictive when it comes to, especially now. Uh, they used to be very restrictive before because, they, like I said, the unicorns were angry and all that kind of stuff. But now it seems like the rules have reversed where Nidhi Sanji is more restrictive and Hollow Life is less restrictive. That's the way the world works. That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way it's going to go for this. And I hope that uh, Hollow Life keeps allowing family in there because it, it makes for good content and it actually brings in money. It actually does. But take a look at all the deleted posts. These deleted by moderators. I can't read most of them because, yeah, the difference in wait, waiting rooms. Oh, yeah, most of the stuff has been, like, here's some stuff deleted by the actual people. There's been some stuff, you know. Um, open season, open sesame, a proper apology, all these things. Uh, you know, the green is deleted by moderator. Post deleted by user is blue. So most of these things are being deleted by moderators. Auto mod sometimes is the red. Blue is that the person deleted them themselves. So there's not a lot to say about this other than, you know, it's been deleted again. They're, they're back to their things. There was a couple days when there was no deletions. Now they're back to their stuff. And they're going to continue doing their stuff, of course, because they want a closed system there to keep up the appearance of a happy world and a happy family. As is to be expected, Niji Sanji is doing an anime impulse thing. It's expected because it is Niji Sanji. It's a large corporation. Anime impulse likes having large corporations that are there. Every single large um, exposition a convention, whatever you want to call it, will want to have a large corporation there. Even with all the stuff that's happened in February, I don't think that there will be anything negative happening there, like, you know, for the, the artists, the fans, the people involved. I don't think they're going to be anything negative per se. A lot of people are going to disagree with the fact that Nidhi Sanji EN is going to Anime Impulse. This was uh, one of the places that uh, Selene was denied because, you know, the issue that happened with her. So, I think that's what's going to going to rub people the wrong way, honestly, is the fact that Selene could have been there, but she was mistreated by Nidhi Sanji and we are where we are today. 
if I got my, my stuff correct. Hopefully I did. Please no, Niji being at cons in the US anytime soon is a bad idea. We don't want the NDF and people angry at Niji Sanji in the same building. It doesn't end well when you have one side is ready to attack people they view as harassing livers and the other side just has a couple of bad eggs that will try to start stuff. Hollow Tempest will also be there. Expect the highest moral value standard from the NDF. Oh dear, dear lordy. Well, it's a good thing I don't live in Seattle. But yeah, that increases the chances of the NDF starting stuff. I do and I kind of want to go watch now. <laughs> people want to watch We want to watch the, the fireworks begin. I've seen a handful of Niji cosplayers artists on Twitter say they're going. They got some mean things said to them at conventions. Even just a girl who had Niji merch on her bag. This would be a thousand times, ten thousand times worse. Nothing condones that. Yeah, you don't. Con I don't condone that. I never do. I never do. Um, don't forget the screenshots of people planning to find Hollow Stars boys and attack them. I remember that from that specific site. Now is not a really good time to be a VTuber during the convention. But being a Niji VTuber going to a convention is extremely difficult right now. And probably will be for the West for a long time to come. That is super scary, you're right. Last December, before everything, I decided cosplaying Alira for last month's 2024 Anime Boston. I chose to cosplay Fuwawa second instead, since I became a huge Fuwamoko fan. Then one month later, she black screen video was posted. Uh, I'm so happy I got to go as, as uh, Fuwamoko instead of Alira. I didn't mess up the cosplay funds for Nidhi Sanji. To be fair, the whole, after the whole shitstorm started, uh, and it's happening currently, if someone has the guts to attend some con and showcase their Niji merch or even cosplay a Niji talent, I suspect that people was some kind of masochist. I mean, even you worshipping some talent, it's definitely not worth you putting your life in danger, except for if you're a, an M. Of course, Anime Impulse, long time known as Niji Khan, right? If they fail on their own con, then the market is over. Some of the stars meet and greet tickets sold out. Wow, some of the stars meet and greet tickets sold out in literal minutes. I wonder how Niji N will fare. Battle, two minutes. Haka, three minutes. Shinri, eight minutes. Flay on 13 minutes. No technical issue with his. Altair, 15 minutes. And Axel, 30 minutes. Wouldn't expect them to be sold out so fast, really, because they're stars. Overall, there's any con that Niji's friendly, it's going to be Anime Impulse. But the revenue, the concerts, and the meet and greets generate. Hard to plug up a cash flow gap. Probably should overall be fine for fans in the GN fandom to go and attend, cosplay, sell merch. Probably no concert and just a meet and greet considering the Hollow Stars EN ones just sold out yesterday. That's very true. It could very well be. Could very well be that way. I just, I'm, I'm honestly hoping that there's not any kind of big fight, any kind of big problem happening there. Uh, as we had last time, we had someone create a fake problem and then, uh, you know, put it all on Twitter. And it, a lot of people are saying that that issue was fake. I don't know if it's fake or not, but still don't mistreat, especially fan artists. They're fan artists. They're not directly associated with Nidhi Sanji. They're fans because it Nidhi Sanji means something to them. They're livers. The livers that they're doing the stuff for means something to them. Don't be that a-hole that takes that kind of joy and excitement away from them. Like seriously, don't be that a-hole. If you don't like it, don't chat with them. Don't talk to them. Don't associate with them. Go away and move into another place of the venue if you see that they're selling merch. Don't go and actually, you know, say bad things to people. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.